now uh, we're talking of education it's not like we are we are really lucky the people in terms of the physical energy in terms of the human energy but what is a human energy now if you are not being educated to put it right of course by education it doesn't necessarily mean we are waiting for some other person to come home to go to africa and educate them on how to do things uh, but anyway we're not going to go into this area today uh the main the, the the central theme of this conversation is family and you have used the word family for a number of time uh in this in the time what we have spent so far in this podcast so what would your what would be your old description of the family let's take the argument from this point now so family is so vitally important to me uh, i have a small family a small immediate family and larger uh, family that I have been disconnected from and it's been uh, my goal most of my life to be reconnected with that family and to build a strong nuclear family. I'm 46, I'm single, um, divorced um, with children, uh, an adult son and two uh, teenagers. Um, and the ideal of family provides protection. It provides guidance. Uh, it provides uh, opportunity, legacy development. Uh, and that's huge because the work that I'm doing isn't just for me in the now. It is for the opportunity that my children's children and their children will one day look back and be able to have a leg to stand upon. It's about empire building. Uh, and I think we've got away from building empires and dynasties. Uh, I think when we think about empires and dynasties, we think of white families. I can name a few. We think of uh, Bush. And you know where that is, right? That's a whole political family or the Kennedys. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think that there is ways in which that Black folks and Indigenous folks, poor people come together and build relationships that support nation building, that support family. Without a strong family foundation, your community suffers. Your morals move. Your opportunity for development and advancement, you become singular in your thinking. It becomes totally uh, transactional uh, engagements about money, about cash, about wealth. Uh, well, not wealth, it becomes about getting rich. And wealth is something different. Wealth is your opportunity that you're leaving something, both knowledge uh, about skills and wisdom for it to be built upon, to be expanded. Um, and so for me personally, would I love to be able to build family, to build empire with someone that comes into what I have existing and create even more? Absolutely. There's nothing more important in this world than to share your love, your time, your energy in building something that gives honor to what God put you here for, to, to give that spirit a way to express itself. All right, uh, well, uh, you see, um, now, like I was saying before, we are not broken headed, we are not broken hands, we are fully fresh human being, but we are where we are. Uh, because some other persons have educated us to be this way, no? So it means that for us to also get to where we need to be, we need to change it from here, from education, from the re-education of our mind. Uh, I don't know how this is going to come. It's going to come from people like you. It's going to come from people that are at home. It's going to come from, well, somehow, it's going to come from among us. And that solution is education. So... What is your reaction to family education? We are still within the theme of family. Because if we are going to have the value, because what sometimes what is broken actually is the value system. It's not because uh, if we want to build one million army in Africa, we don't have people to do it. It just take a couple of years to trade there and they'll be able to take down any threat that is coming into the territory from any angle. You just need the mind. We first need to get it here. How do we go about the education? So I think that education comes from a, a, a heart, spirit-centered place. And then you seek out education because we're not uh, empty vessels in our minds. We, we have some thoughts already. Even a five-year-old has some thoughts. And I think those thoughts are, are generated from what we believe in our hearts. And if we start to, and we look at our contracting across Africa and we're thinking and we're putting the value of family, 
of nation building, of legacy development, of uh, eradicating poverty, uh, undoing the harms of colonialism into our, uh, into our work every day. There is not a time where a foreign investor will go into China and uh, come out with a deal that is totally beneficial for the foreign investor. It won't happen. Because no matter what we say, you know, we look at Taiwan or we look at Singapore, part of the, the way of they do business is a values-based way of doing business. And that value says that it is their, um, their survival is first, their advancement is first. And I, I appreciate that. I look how far Taiwan and uh, Singapore has come in the last 30 years uh, with their technological advancements. Um, and the world is looking towards them now. That too can be all the nations of Africa. And I think that comes into play where we, the, the mind piece comes into play when we are no longer looking at the fact that we're doing this on an individual basis. Often people talk to me about corruption. Why do you do business in Africa? Because what is all corrupt? And I, and I say to them, when the United States of America was 60 years old, Nigeria, the big boy, the giant, 60 years old as a nation of being free, what was the United States like? when it was 60 years old. And when you have that pause, that silence, and when you put it into perspective, then, then yes, I'm going to do business. I'm going to engage with my brothers and sisters because we share a same family. And if I meet people along the way that share the same values, then we engage in something that is meaningful and productive. Um, and then that mind shift changes. The mind shift is that, you know, what is Western is not always best. The West wants your market and you have to value your market and your market is your consumer and your consumer lives within a family context. And if your family, you know, is not doing well, it doesn't matter. You have all the shiny bling, but people are not being uh, helpful to each other. It's not a safe community. And we want all those things working well together so that we can have a, an Africa that we deserve. Very much for that. And now, um, okay, talking about what you are doing in Africa, and tell us more about your project, the International Institute of Women Develop of uh, Family Development. Uh, tell us more about it. Take us deeper into the project. Sure, we are, have a campaign called the Africa We Deserve. The Africa We Deserve is a campaign to establish one million jobs in the continent by 2030, uh, through various sectors, through agriculture, education, health, energy, and infrastructure. Uh, we have been uh, engaged in work in Zimbabwe uh, around hemp uh, development uh, and exportation. Uh, we have done work in Liberia around education and one of our most recent articles highlights that work where we have an initiative called the Pace Setters Initiative where we connect uh, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. And many may not know that in the United States of America, people of color, black people could not attend regular college, right? Could not attend Harvard at one particular point in time, could not attend Yale, could not attend many colleges, just what it was, right? Um, and that was part of our history, it's part of our legacy. Um, and in that time frame, other institutions were created. Uh, Morgan uh, State University, Bowie State University, Morehouse University, uh, uh, many other colleges across this great Gramblin University, which are uh, historically black colleges who have a long history of taking the skills that former slaves had or freemen after we were, uh, were set free by emancipation, emancipation proclamation and took those skills, which were hard labor skills and turned them into industrial skills. Um, and then and then used them towards the science field uh, where we had George Washington Carver, uh, a great scientist, a black man who came out of slavery, his family came out of slavery from the United States who was made a eunuch. He had his testicles uh, removed 
by one of his slave masters because his slave masters thought that he would um, come of age and harm children. And we all know who did most of the harming on uh, of slaves. It wasn't slaves harming slaves. Um, he created over 300 products out of uh, peanuts, uh, created soy. Uh, you know, the federal government uh, utilized his, his work and his inventions. Great scientist, uh, William Latimer. Mm -hmm.